the, the, the text I'm going to be using uh, this morning is Hebrews chapter 8, verses 4 and 5. And I want to talk about uh, the pattern of the true tabernacle. And in view of the, the tabernacle, we want to consider Jesus. <coughs> For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see it, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. <clears throat> so I want to talk about I want to talk about patterns and examples and forms and shadows first and then and then we want to talk about <clears throat> what the what the tabernacle teaches us about God and about Christ. Now the one the one of the first things these are just some that we we've discussed a lot of these already and and uh, but one of, I, just, I just want to share with you the things that that I've seen through this, and one of the first things that that, uh, that has come to me is is that the pattern was, was it was God ordained and defined. Mm -hmm. Patterns are they're authorized by God, <clears throat> meaning that they're not the, the the product of man's observations. Amen. And and I that's something that's particular to me because I've I've uh, I've been subject to, to well, you need to follow this pattern, and really, the pattern that I was told to follow was simply an observation of man, and and, and it may or may not be a pattern to follow. And but see, this the pattern we're talking about here. This is a this is a pattern that was showed to Moses in the mount. This was a, this was a God ordained power. This was there's authority there. There's power there. We know that this is something that God that God has has a uh, has determined to be a a pattern. So just because men uh, may say something is a pattern to be followed doesn't necessarily mean that it is. <clears throat> it was a see, see. This is what God had said. The tabernacle is a pattern. It was it was an example and it was a shadow of something better. The tabernacle with with its instruments and its ordinances, not just the tabernacle itself, but with its instruments that were contained therein and the ordinances. They were these all these things were were a pattern. According to Hebrews 9.23, a pattern of things in the heavens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was it was a figure, figures, until the time of Reformation. And so these are not just observations of man. You see, God has revealed that the tabernacle was a pattern of heavenly things. We're, we're on safe ground. Uh, and and pattern, see, why, why did God give us a pattern? Why, why did he do this? See, patterns are teachers. This this was to teach us. This was to open up things so we could see things a little more clearly, and uh, and be prepared. You know, I was thinking about this. Uh, if 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 the pattern only depicted the true, why didn't he just give us the true? And uh, and I, re I recall one time, uh, you know, Jesus said something like this: that I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. I just, you know, uh -huh. we, we couldn't have, we couldn't bear it then. We 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 needed. We, well, because of our frailty, we needed to be taught of these things. We need to be showed. See, now we have the pattern. And now we have we have the true. This, yeah. We have the substance. Yeah. So we're able to better yeah. understand. We're be able to better understand the true, in light of the pat because of the pattern. Yes. You see, yeah. um, <clears throat> see God not only and I, I, I praise God for this that God not only wants to do a great work, but He wants to tell us about it. Amen. Yes. Yeah. You see, you see, we re we derive the benefit from Him doing the great work, but when He tells us about it, see that's. Then you believe it. Then you can then you can take hold of it. Then see then it, then it's it's beneficial to you. You know it's true. See, it couldn't just be something done in heavenly places and we were unaware of it. Right. He told us this is what's happening. This is the true. Uh -huh. This is the true substance. So we can we can rejoice in it and trust in it. He wants us to know. He wants us to know the things that are freely given to us so that we can live in hope, so that we can live in joy, so that we can live in, in faith. <clears throat> it's God's desire to show us his covenant. Amen. He gave us a pattern so that we would better understand what was necessary in in putting away sin what was necessary in coming to God what was necessary in dwelling with God 
He gave us a pattern. He gave us a tabernacle to teach us of Jesus. In the scriptures, a pattern is not is not the first from which all others are a copy. It's, it's not as though this is the pattern and then we want to copy everything else after this. You know, sometimes we use patterns that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the way. That's not what we're talking about here. Amen. Um, Amen. And see, this this needs to be clear. It's not, it's not as though we have well, this is a, this is the perfect one, and so everything else is going to be a copy of that. The pattern itself uh -huh. was the, was the copy of the true. It's the actually it's actually the the opposite of that. Yeah. Is the copy of the true thing? The tabernacle was a copy or a pattern of heavenly th of the heavenly things that it portrayed. It was a shadow that was cast by the body. Yes. It was a physical representation or a figure of a spiritual reality, a figure of the true, the way the scripture says it. And so patterns teach us about the true substance. They teach us of things that we would, may not otherwise know. Uh, patterns are things that uh, we can see because they depict things that are, that are unseen. An example of this, uh, you know, ba baptism is a form. But what, what you see is, 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 is a depiction of what's really happening. You know, so 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 when uh, what you see in, in the physical is a depiction. See, you you want to see when a, when a person is baptized into Christ, they're not just they're not just being lowered in water. <laughs> you you got to see that's a form of something of of of, 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 of see they're being buried with Christ. Amen. They're being united with Him in by baptism Amen. and the death. See, this is something, and that's more true. That's more real if we can say it that way uh -huh. than what you actually see. And so that's just an example. Is is the form of the doctrine. The tabernacle and all its instruments and ordinances teach us about Christ, our high priest, who, and, and what he would accomplish in the greater, more perfect uh, tabernacle. And so uh, <clears throat> the tabernacle constructed by Moses and, 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 uh, and the Levites there, uh, it, w it was made by men's hands, whereas its antitype it's, was not made with hands. The true is not made with hands. Uh, and so we have a we have a comparison here between something that is worldly versus something that is heavenly, and I, I use that that phrase in the sense you know a worldly sanctuary. It was a worldly sanctuary. It was it was it was on the world. It was in the world. It pertained to worship that was done here, and things done things done in the world can can only produce worldly outcomes. And uh, see, so it has to, it actually has to be done in the spirit. See, there's things that we do here, but when they're done in the spirit, well then they 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 produce spiritual benefit. Uh, it can't just be of, of the world or around the world. <clears throat> Jesus Christ accomplished for us something that no one else could accomplish. Where the priests of the law served unto an example and shadow of heavenly things, Christ, being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, by his own blood he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. See, his work, it was a heavenly work. Amen. The worldly sanctuary was a, was a pattern, a figure of the true. The work done there did not take away sin. It did not make the worshippers perfect in conscience, but it taught us of one who would come and do just that. Yes. <clears throat> for Christ is entered into heaven itself, not to, uh, uh, to appear in the presence of God, for us, and so patterns are patterns and forms. And these are things that are seen with the natural eye, but the true substance, while unseen, is is far better. Care must be taken that the focus is not directed to the pattern, but to the to the body, to the, to the true, and and this was a. This was a struggle for Israel, is that they were focused on the pattern, the shadow, mm -hmm. rather than the true. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so we want to take heed lest we fall. They failed to recognize the better covenant and the better sacrifice in Christ. I'm speaking generally now. It's worded this way in Romans 10, that for, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. See, the, see, see what, they were, what they had in, in the tabernacle was a picture of good things to come. And when the good things come... You lay hold of the good things. When, 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 when the true comes, when the substance comes, you can, that's when you want to throw off the old. You know, and, and lay hold of something that is better. Um, and so they were able, uh, you know, those who believed, those who were looking for him, those who were, who were looking for him, they, well, they believed. <clears throat> uh, some living after the flesh were attracted to their own accomplishments, which they could, which they could do and which they could see. You see, but the work of our great high priest was accomplished in heavenly places. 
And so when he bore our sins in his body, it couldn't be seen with the natural eye. And when he put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, it couldn't be seen with the natural eye. When he spoiled principalities and powers, it could, these are things that couldn't be seen with the natural eye. Uh, it was those things that were done by God, unseen by the natural eye, but now being we behold through faith. Uh, it was these things that accomplished our salvation. It was those things that... Uh, that separate Christ from any other high priest and any other sacrifice. The sight of flesh is actually, it's limited, but see, the sight of faith can see it can see it far off. It can see in the, in the deeper uh, realities. Yes. And so the flesh focuses on what, what it can do, on what it can see. But faith sets its gaze higher, beholding things that are done in heavenly places. Faith trusts in what God, in what God does. Amen. Where flesh worships the pattern, faith worships the God who gave the pattern. Amen. Amen. Faith praises God. You see, where the flesh flesh would make a golden calf. See, that's, that's the difference. They want to, we want to see it. See, uh, see, see, faith submits to the only true God, where flesh would ask for a king, just like the nations. You see, you see how that works. And so I'm just, I'm just showing you. I just we we can't be distracted by the pattern. You can't be distracted by the things. You want to see higher. Faith can, faith can go hold of the things that are higher. Faith walks confident, confidently in the Lord will, where flesh will seek a sign. Uh, and religiously speaking, faith believes the record given by God concerning unseen truths where flesh cannot see past the patterns and the forms and the figures. Yes. This is how it's written in Scripture. The mindset on the flesh is death. I mean, it's, it's enmity with God. <clears throat> because it cannot take hold of the eternal life which is given in the Spirit. See, it can only take hold of things which are seen, and the things which are seen, well, they're temporal. But the things which are unseen, they are eternal. Okay. And so you just see, you see, you see, this is, we can see this through a pattern. The, the necessity and the uh, effectuality of faith. Even so, patterns cannot be ignored or obscured. You know, you don't want to, we don't want to be sloppy about this where we just, well, we don't need a pattern then. You know, we, that's, not, that's not how it is. Uh -huh. uh, though patterns illustrate for us better things, heavenly, unseen things, the patterns themselves cannot be neglected and, I guess, until the substance is portrayed, that, that it portrays is obtained. Yeah. Amen. But, but until then, we just didn't need it. Amen. <clears throat> Those in Israel could not, like, they couldn't neglect circumcision. Even though it was, it was looking forward to a, to a better circumcision, right? This was, this was, you know, it portrayed uh, something better, but they couldn't neglect it. You know, if, if you if you neglected it, you were cut off from the people. Like, that's just the way it was. Uh, the pattern must be performed in order for the true substance to be properly represented. See, that's why. See, if it's a pattern, it has to, it has to be. It can't. You can't tamper with it. They couldn't. They couldn't see. It had to be. You had to follow the the pattern that was shown thee in the mount, because it portrayed heavenly things. And so, if, if the pattern was off. Well, it, the, the, the picture that it was to portray was off as well. And so we, would, we wouldn't really know the things that we have in Christ. It, it, would, be, it would be difficult for us. <clears throat> when Christ entered into the greater, more perfect tabernacle, the earthly one, uh, well, it became of none effect. We, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, as though God were declaring him, uh, the, the end of this and, and the way into the holy places <laughs> was now open. And uh, so we rejoice in that. The pattern gave way to the true substance. Well, let's talk about the tabernacle. I just want to observe some things, maybe not the particulars of each, of each, uh, each ordinance and in instruments. Although that's, I would encourage you to do so. <laughs> These are good things to look into. Um, but I want to. I, I just want to make some uh, some observations and and try to encourage you with them. The scripture says. Uh, According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. So not only was the tabernacle itself constructed after a pattern, but the instruments and the ordinances were as well. And they showed us what was involved in communion with the Lord. Remember in, in, in Exodus 25 verse 8, he said, Let them make for me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. There's purpose here. That I may dwell among them. And so the tabernacle teaches us of dwelling Dwelling, the, the, the dwelling of God, of coming into the dwelling of God. 
You never want to neglect anything that's going to teach you about the dwelling of God, where God is. These are not things to... This, you, you don't want to just, just glance over Leviticus, which is a common practice, and, 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 and some of us have done that. You don't See, these things, are, they're teachers. They'll teach us of, of the dwelling of God. The concept of a sanctuary is not simply a, a, a quiet place for meditation. This is, not, this is not how Scripture speaks of it. It's not just a, a, a quiet place or, you know, this is a, a, a place of, of reverence and, and, and to be solemn. Although I don't doubt that these things are true, but the reason is because God's there. That's why. Amen. That's why it's a place of meditation. That's why it's a place of reverence. So it's not because of the place itself. It's because of who's there. Amen. It's a dwelling of God. Amen. We know that, uh, God, here's how the scripture says in Acts chapter 17, that, that the uh, God does not dwell in temples made with hands. No. Yeah. And that God, he, he, he cannot be contained but in, in places. He, he, he can't be. Uh, but, but we also must recognize that there are places where God does not, he just won't dwell there. You know, <laughs> he's not there. And, and if he's not there, well, there's not really much benefit for us being there. Uh, but see, the, the tabernacle is a place where he said this, that I may dwell among them. You know, so this was a, this was a, a primary place. We don't want to, we don't want to neglect that. This is a place where he does dwell. When speaking of a dwelling, we're speaking of, of, of you know, a dwelling is, is where a person resides. And they don't just they don't just stop by. Is where is where they they're, they're housed. They 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 live. They spend most of their time. And so we're speaking of a main place of habitation. This was the this was a this was the main place here. The the tabernacle and the and the holy place because it was the dwelling of God. Uh, God dwells. <laughs> Maybe this goes without saying. God dwells in holy places. <laughs> this is where He dwells. If, you, if anyone has a question about where would God, He's in holy places. That's where He dwells. He dwells. Well, He dwells in light. He dwells in places of truth and righteousness. <clears throat> he told them to make for Him a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And if anyone seeks God, <coughs> they were to go, go to the tabernacle. You know, this was the place. If anyone needs to hear from God, he will speak from his tabernacle. This is declared in the scripture. Does anyone desire or need a sac to, to sacrifice to God, to offer a sacrifice to him? Offer it at the tabernacle. This is where God is. The tabernacle was a central place for Israel. Everything that they did revolved around this place. In fact, the, the, you know, the camp was encircled around this place. This was the place. It was a holy place. This was wh Why? <laughs> Because God was there, that's why. And so these things, we, you know, we, where God is, those are, those are the main places for his people. And so we're talking about coming into the, the presence of God. And the tabernacle also teaches us that some things must be accomplished before you come into the presence of God. <clears throat> before you're permitted to stand before him. The tabernacle, it was, you know, really, you look at it, it was a series of barriers. Yeah. Keep, keeping them out. Yeah. And obviously because of the sin. You know, it, it taught us this. That it, you couldn't just walk in and be in the... You, couldn't, you can't just walk into His presence. Things have to be accomplished ahead of time in order for us to do this. Um, the tabernacle was... It, well, it was, it was in the camp of Israel. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't in Egypt. It was here. There was a place that, where it was. It was in the camp of, of Israel. It was in the middle of the camp. It was, and the outer court made a separation from the, from, from the people. Not just anybody could go in and... And once inside the court, there was a there was a veil dividing, and, and well, there's another veil. You know, there was veils. There was there was barriers between the place where God was and times and places. Uh, while all these barriers served to keep the people out from the presence of God, they were very they were also created in a very specific way to, to show the place the way to God. Isn't that something? That the, the very things that were barriers were also the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> see, yeah. see, you you got to come in through the way. You can't yeah. come up any other way. So I, I thought that was interesting. I really uh, just rejoice in it. The, con the construction or the layout of the tabernacle shows us what is involved in coming in the presence of God. And we learn that not just anyone can come in. <laughs> but the, the priest. It had to be a priest. We also learn that they can't just come in unless there was a sacrifice for sin. And we also learn that the sacrifice, this sacri it couldn't just be any sacrifice. The sacrifice had to be accepted. Right? <clears throat> We learn that in order to stand before God, we must be washed. We learn that we are in the presence of God. When we are in the presence of God, we are, in, we are on holy ground. We're in, in a holy place, a most holy place. Finally, we learn that when uh, that one high priest enters in the holy place before the presence of God, and it's in behalf of the people. Uh, these are all things that are necessary in order for man to commune with God and to be able to stand in his presence. See, God is teaching his people. He's making them ready. For the true 
the great high priest. The tabernacle is an accommodation for men. You know, I was thinking that the tabernacle is referred to as the tabernacle of the congregation. The tabernacle, it housed more than furniture. And it was even, you know, it was even more than the dwelling of God. It portrayed the dwelling of God among them. You know, this was it was it was among them. And so God had us in mind in the construction of the tabernacle. The tabernacle of the congregation. This was a see, it was a primary place for the people of Israel. It was a primary place for them. <clears throat> This is where they, they had to come if they were going to offer something to God. This is where they were going to minister unto the Lord. This is where they were going to find atonement for their sins. This is a place where God would meet with them and speak with them. He would speak with them there. It was, it was them. It was, it was, it, he had them in mind. Uh, thus the people were, who sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation. <laughs> well, go out into, you're seeking the Lord? Go out into the tabernacle of the congregation. Amen. The reason for the high priest and the necessity for a tabernacle was, it was because of us. It's because of men. God does not dwell in temples made with hands, and he's not worshipped with men's hands as though he needs anything. The tabernacle was not a necessity for God, but it was a necessity for us. Amen. It was a place that they could come to be with God. A place where man could come to be with God. And the, and the man, the man Christ Jesus, he entered in to the more perfect tabernacle. See, a man has entered in to commune with God Amen. as a forerunner. I really like that the tabernacle teaches us of nearness. Mm -hmm. The nearness, remember the uh, Asaph said that to be near to God is my good. Nearness, the nearness of God is my good. He found out that the truth that danger lies in being far from God. You're in you're, if you're far from God, this is, this is a dangerous place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Nearness to God is where we are safe. Mm -hmm. The precious commodities that are necessary to sustain the soul are found in nearness to God. Amen. It is not as though there are only some that should that, that draw in close to God, and everybody else kind of stands. If you want, if you need the precious commodities, the things that you really need to make it from here to heaven, they're they're found in closeness. To God, that's that's where that's where the precious and most valuable things are supplied. It's in it's in nearness to Him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You want you want to know God? You need draw near. Right. You want to be upheld by God? Draw near. Do you need understanding? Draw near to God. Mm -hmm. Do you need mercy and grace to help in your time of need? Well, you draw near. Mm -hmm. Do you need good things? Draw near. Amen. You see, you don't have to. This is you don't have to want. Oh, I I, I need mercy. I'm gonna, I need to go over here. I need grace. I need to come over here. I need understanding. I need to go. This is not how it is. You just forsake all of your wanderings about to find all these all these things that are necessary to make a God and draw near to God because they're all resident in one. Yes. In, the, in our great high priest, he, he will minister them to you and give them to you. So you're, you're, this is why you can have you can have the one thing mindset. The one thing. Yes. Uh -huh. Focus. One thing I ask and I shall seek. You know, there's just one thing. Mm -hmm. Mary knew that. She's, <laughs> she, saw, she saw one thing. <clears throat> Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are afar from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. Amen. Amen. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. <laughs> when you draw near to God, you stop talking about your works and you start talking about his works. That's, that just happens that way. Amen. See, the tabernacle teaches us that the closer we come to God, the more precious the provision. You remember from, from the outside, the closer you come in, into the holiest of all. Every, everything becomes, everything is of more value. Everything is more valuable. The, even the construction of the things are more valuable. Uh, when, when you come in, you know, there's, 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 the, there's the brazen altar. It was brass. You know, it was made of, made of brass. The, the hangings, of, then there, there's hangings of fine linen, sockets of brass, fillets of silver. Okay, silver. But this is kind of, it's a little more valuable. We're getting, we're getting, we must be getting closer. Inside the holy place stood the three items, and they were all of precious metal. The altar 
of incense overlaid with pure gold. <laughs> you came closer, the things got more valuable. That's how it is with God. The more you get closer, the things become more precious, more valuable. Uh, getting, boy, getting close. The table of showbread, the same. The candlestick was actually uh, a beaten work made of pure gold. It was solid. Uh, in the most holy place, the Ark of the Covenant contained the, ta the two tablets of stone, uh, the pot of, of manna, the Aaron's rod, which is but See, these are one-of-a-kind one items. Precious. See, the closer you got, <laughs> everything becomes more precious, more valuable. You couldn't get that anywhere else. That's how it is with God. There's something you can't get anywhere else. You can only get in nearness to Him, in drawing near to Him. Well, we praise God that we can come near. See, this, when you're thinking about the high priest, this is what you're thinking about. Amen? This is what you yeah. think about. A high priest, access. High priest, I can come near. Draw near with Amen. boldness. Amen. <clears throat> oh, boy. <clears throat> holiness. The tabernacle teaches us of holiness. Everything in the tabernacle was consecrated to the Lord. Everything. Everything was devoted. It was holy unto the Lord. Like, that's, that, that's, that's kind of the sum. Holiness unto the Lord. All these things. The... The, the, the people, the tabernacle itself, the instruments, the ordinances, holy unto the Lord. From the materials to the fabrics of the materials, the shapes of the, of the objects, these, they were all instructed and constructed. They were all done. Holiness. There was, these weren't, you, you couldn't find them at the local store. Like this was, they were holiness. They were separated unto God and unto the work and the ministry and the tabernacle. They were all holy. The tabernacle teaches us about, about holiness. Nothing common was used in the ministry of the tabernacle. And nothing used in the ministry of the tabernacle was to be used for common purposes. Right. Don't don't burn that incense someplace else. You know, was, this was holy. Yeah. It's this teaching us now. It teaches us about ministry. It teaches us about, well, look at, look at Christ Jesus himself. <laughs> holy unto the Lord. You see, uh, there's a separation that takes place. You are a holy people. Not common. Holy people. Separated unto the ministry to, to the Lord. And that which is holy, we don't use it for common purposes. It's been separated for the Lord. We don't want to use it for, for just everyday purposes. There's some things we have to do to understand that. But don't take don't take the things that you've got and the things that you have to offer to the Lord to minister to the people of God and just use them for everyday common purposes. Israel was a holy people. The Levites, the sons of Aaron, they were ordained to the ministry of the tabernacle. They were not to seek other work, right? The priests dressed in holy garments offered up holy sacrifices. Whatsoever touches the altar shall be holy. This is teaching us about holiness. That was the decree. They entered into the holy place and the holiest of all. They and their ministry was summarized by the inscription, Holiness to the Lord. Holy unto the Lord. It teaches us also about coming to God. If anything or anyone is going to minister in the house, he must be holy. And God is serious about this. You shall be holy, for I am holy, says the Lord. Do not allow yourself to be spent or worn out for common everyday purposes. Holy unto the Lord. Jesus shows us this perfectly when he declares, I always do the things that please him. He was sent to accomplish the Father's will, and he completely submitted to it. His confession was, I have come to do thy will, O God. How about this? I sanctify myself. Yeah. Like these are statements that he made. But he was holy unto the Lord. You can't, Not to be distracted by any other purposes. Right. Remember that there was a dispute among two brothers. Uh, uh, how about this inheritance? Who should get, you know, remember that dispute? Who made me judge between me? <laughs> I go, I'm, I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. You know, this is kind of the attitude. I'm, I have something Amen. holy unto the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The tabernacle teaches us of provision. That salvation is a supply of God. That standing before God, standing in His presence, dwelling with God, this is a provision of God. <clears throat> the prophet was right that salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is by grace, God's provision. And through, through faith, this is our trust in that, our, our believing. <clears throat> the tabernacle, which was a pattern of heavenly things, of the true tabernacle, teaches us that our coming and dwelling with God is based upon the supply and provision of God. God gave them the tabernacle. God gave them the priesthood. God provided a, a way for men uh, to communion. Even, even though they were sinful, there was a way for it. While we were yet sinners, you know, this was a, a provision was made. 
The priest ministered in behalf of the people. He, the work was done for them, right? This is teaching us of provision from another. <clears throat> Sacrificial lamb bore the penalty of the sins of the people. The sin bearer was provided for them. Truly in, in, in Mount Zion could be named Yahweh Jireh. The Lord provides. In the mountain of the Lord it will be provided for you. The candlestick is a demonstration of this. Remember, the, you know the candlestick is the burn always before the Lord. The candlestick is representative of illumination. We've discussed this already, but... The flame never went out. You know, so the flame could why? Because there was the constant provision of oil. Right? It was it was constantly being provided, and and it shows us that uh, the ways of God. Illumination is required in order to minister in the house of the Lord, and that illumination can burn always because of the constant provision of oil. See, the anointing which you have received of Him abides in you. It's like a well springing up into eternal life. There's a constant provision of oil, so we can constantly so the illumination can constantly shine. We can constantly uh, be burning before the Lord. Amen. And if those things weren't enough, in case we, we couldn't see it, the, premier, the primary, the premier object in the tabernacle is a testimony of this truth. Provision, the Ark of the Covenant, the jar of manna, the tables of stone, Aaron's rod, they, they spoke of provision, the provision of God. They spoke of, it was a testimony to stand, just remember, you stood before the Ark of the Testimony, testifying that God has provided for his people. Like a, because of God's gracious choice right, in, the, in the priesthood. It reminded us of provision, of sustenance, of, of, uh, of His grace, and of a law which was ordained unto life. <clears throat> the tabernacle also teaches us of what it is to be acceptable to God. <clears throat> if God does not accept what is done, and who does it, all is lost. We must be accepted by God, and what we offer must be accepted by Him. I, I think that there might be a delusion in our day that uh, that we think that anything offered to God is accepted by Him. Yeah. This is not so. That's right. That's right. You can't just offer up anything to God and He accepts it. Well, this is all I have. Well, keep it. <laughs> this, is, this is some things are just not acceptable to God. <clears throat> not everything that's offered to Him is accepted uh, by Him. And this isn't a small matter. If what you offer to God is not acceptable, you'll suffer loss, and the loss may be great. Here's an account. Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Not everything that's offered to God is accepted by God. Amen. What is offered to God? But see, it, it, it must. This is a must. It must be. It must be acceptable to Him. If we are going to be accepted, and what we offer is going to be accepted, we see. This is the main thing. It must be accepted. We, at the end of the day, we must be accepted by God. If we're not accepted by God, nothing else really matters. Amen. There's just no. There's just no other point. Right. Right. And if there's no. And if we don't know that we are accepted by God, we can't. We can't minister. See, we have, we have the, at least the understanding. We saw in the and Abihu. We're not going. In. We're not going in. But see, if we know that we're acceptable, well, boldness, yeah. confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> if what uh, see, if, see if we're not acceptable and our offering is not acceptable, this is the time to shut the doors. Just shut the doors. Mm -hmm. Do not come before him. Do not offer anything to him. First, go to the messenger of the covenant, for he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then, then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord. See, we had nothing to offer. Our offer we weren't acceptable. Our offering wasn't acceptable, but when we came to the messenger of the covenant, we were purged. And then our offering could be accepted by God. Amen. Right? And we'll present Amen. yourself. Amen. Amen. The table of incense also shows us that what is offered uh, about, about being acceptable to God, see, it's pleasing to Him. It's, 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 ple it's a sweet aroma yes. <clears throat> unto Him. And don't you find that it's a sweet aroma unto you? Do, do you want anything yeah. else to, to, and then to offer things to the Lord? Not as though He needs anything, but it's a thank offering. We're, we want to please Him in all respects. Exactly. It is pleasing because it is acceptable. Christ our High Priest offered up Himself and the Lord saw the travail of his soul and was satisfied. It pleased the Lord. It pleased him. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why? 
He and his offering were acceptable. A sweet aroma. God is not the only one interested in what is being offered. We learn from the pattern of the tabernacle that the declaration of Christ's sacrifice, see an offering, a sacrifice, was held the, the it was captivating to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. On the mercy seat, there was two cherubims, and they were looking. <laughs> they, they, they were interested in what was being offered. They were interested if it was going to be acceptable. They see, they're looking down. Their faces were toward the offer, toward the mercy seat. See, they were, see, this is teaching us about things that are acceptable. Not only is God looking and is God interested in things that are acceptable, the angels and heavenly and principalities and heavenly places there, they're interested. They're, they, they're looking in. The cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. <laughs> that's, where the, that's where their attention was fixed. What They weren't fixed. What's going on outside the, outside these four walls? <laughs> that's a common phrase. They weren't, they weren't looking to see what was going on out there. They were looking to see what was going on here. They were looking to see what God was going to do. <laughs> he didn't leave. Oh, boy, he, he showed them something. Amen. And he still is. The attention of these angelic beings was focused in on the pro propitiatory. That's another name for that. Depicting for us that the angels desire to look into these things. Doesn't, doesn't the apostles open this up? See the angels long to look into these things. What Christ did and is doing is a display to them of God's manifold wisdom. His, his great power. His great love. His great mercy. See it's a display to them. I rejoice in it with them. <clears throat> Perhaps the mercy seat is the best portrayal of acceptance with God. For in it we see that God will be merciful to our unrighteousnesses and our sins and transgressions. He will remember no more. Amen. Amen. The work of the high priest, it, well, see, it wasn't, it wasn't done until he came to the mercy seat and until atonement was made. I mean, this, had, this had to be done. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee, and there I will meet with thee. <laughs> and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are above the ark of the testimony. <laughs> it's, it's there. He, 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 didn't, he didn't say, oh, I'll meet with you over here, or over here. But there had to be mercy. Well, God is merciful. <clears throat> yeah. I wanted to, uh, well, we know. We know that that uh, that the body of all these shadows is Christ. Yeah. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. And I wanted I wanted to I wanted to look at all these different things uh, these different things that we see from the tabernacle and and in all of them to declare that Christ is the body of all these things. Amen. Amen. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect to a holy day or a new moon or Sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of Christ. <clears throat> Not only is Jesus our high priest, he's also the body or the substance of all the shadows of the tabernacle. Not only is he portrayed in the high priest, he's portrayed in the very tabernacle. All these things were involved. And, and there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of things we left out, you know, and and, and I don't I don't mean to that these are things aren't important. I just these are some things that I that I wanted to share with you and we can continue to talk about them, but is is a shadow of the, the ways of God and the shadow of the way to God. They are revealed and they are fulfilled in the Son of God. All these things that, that were involved in, and portrayed to us, they're all they're, they're fulfilled. They're all revealed. The, the body that casts that shout is Christ. And we have him. Amen. We have such a high priest. Amen. See, we've been illuminated. We've been sanctified. We, we are accepted. We talk, talk about being accepted. We are accepted in the beloved. This is the declaration Amen. of God. You are accepted. He's made us accepted Amen. in the beloved. Amen. Amen. The Lamb of God has taken away the sin. And he's taken away the sin of the world. He's done it. The Lamb of God has Amen. taken away the sin of the world. Amen. He is our sanctuary. He is our temple. He is the propitiation for our sins. He is. Mm -hmm. He is. This is the, 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 the attention of the principalities and powers and the angels and, and heavenly places, their, their attention is on Him and what He is doing. He's the propitiation for our sins. He is the way to God. Amen. He is. 
He is the high priest, and he ever liveth to make intercession for us. He is. He is. He is not entered into holy places made with hands, but into heaven itself. Now. Now? <laughs> as long as it's called now. <laughs> as long as it's called today. As long as it's now. He, he ever lives to make intercession and to appear in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. He's appearing in the presence of God. You want to make it personal. He appears in the presence of God for you. Amen. Amen. We have him. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. All these things portrayed and we looked and we looked forward and they were shadows and we, went, we have him. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have such a high priest, brethren. Do not settle for shadows. We have the body. Amen. Amen. Do not settle for a figure. We have the true. Amen. Amen. We, we, we have access to God because we have, we have Christ Jesus, our great high priest. Amen. 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 I'm ready for your, for your comments, brethren. It was a good uh, summary that you said that we, that we have it. It's good to have that affirmed to our spirits that we have it. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, this matter of uh, the patterns, uh, you know, the, the the Church of Christ and the Christian Church and the Campbellstone movement in particular, which I'm most familiar with, uh, are, are noted for what they call pattern theologies, mm -hmm. which means that you you got to do it just exactly like we say, and if, it's, uh, if you err from that pattern and the in the very least, you know, and they and they take the, they use this their text, you know, the Hebrews, the text in Hebrews, and quoting from Moses, there the see that thou doest do all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mouth. Well, that that really isn't the point of the pattern, as you pointed out. Mm -hmm. The point of the pattern is to is actually the the end of the pattern is to give us something to believe. Mm -hmm. It's, the pattern is showing us that this salvation is very involved. It's very intricate. Uh, I mean, what it took to save us, uh, it, it took some very involved, uh, some great and deep involvements, even on the part of God. And, uh, and, and God, there's only, you know, there's only a certain, like this was like, God, this is a narrow way that God Himself was passing through in order to save us. There was there was only one way. See, it was only one way that He could save us. But it was according to this pattern mm -hmm. showed in the mount, you know. Mm -hmm. And the pattern illustrates what the pattern illustrates shows us. It, it actually is the is the substance of what we believe. See, we, mm -hmm. is, we, we yeah. so we, yeah. it, it, the sap, the pattern has given us something to believe, not something to do. It's actually getting it, it feeds our faith. You know, it, it ministers to our faith, and and we we look back to the pattern, to you know, as to, for some of the details, yeah. of course, you know, uh -huh. but but it, we don't we don't look for the pat to the pattern for. Well, you know, this do and live. That's the, you know, that's, that's right. uh -huh. if you do, if you go that way, you're going to die. You're going to yeah. be cut off. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's the word. I appreciate the way that the Holy Spirit writes this. It, it talks about the true tabernacle. Yes. And and sometimes people, when they're talking about, they're talking about spiritual things, and they'll say, well, well, is it is it spiritual or is it real? <laughs> and and that's not right. It's Yes. The spiritual is the truth. Yeah. You know, it, you can you can say is it physical or is it spiritual? But but the spiritual is just as real, and the spiritual is actually what we need to look at. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's not it's not any less true. It's just it's just not what. We